So we are here doing the CSE 2015 midterm one question oh. number is it three. Yeah. Problem number three, which is about predictive. Uh, writing a predictive recursive descent parser for this grammar. So the first step of this grammar is proving that the grammar supports a predictive parser, which would go through the rules, but we're not going to do that now. Um, and we need to write the functions parse b and parse c. Do you come to me with me later after you're done? I'm recording right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I have a meeting at 4.45. Okay. And, and I'll do part A. So, yes, the first part of the yeah. So parse, so parse B. We need to write parse B. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So we have B. Oh. So we need two options. We need to decide between B goes to C, B, or B goes to little B, big B, little B. Right? So the first thing we need to do is get a token. Now we want to check, is it the rule B goes to CD? So so what do I need to check? Uh, I don't know. I think you parse C right now. Honestly. Parse C? But I don't know if it's this rule or this rule. So they check, they Would you check for the first, the, the first of B? I need to not check. The first of B contains both of these first. So the first, first, of, first of CD? And that's CD. I mean. The first of CD. Okay. Right? Because I already proved in part A that the first of CD is distinct from the first of B capital D, little b, right? I've already proved that in part A. So I want to check if the t-type exists in the first of CD. So what is the first of CD? Would it be just C? Oh, no, it would be C. It would be CD, lowercase cd. Right. Well, well, what else? CD and epsilon, but. Yeah, C or d. t-type is equal to d. Or it's the follow of d, right? Who's follow? That ball of D. That's B. Where it goes to. Oh, ball of B. Follow of B. Follow B. Right. right, because it's whatever comes after B. I gotcha. D also comes after B, but we don't know. Actually, that may work, but I don't want to think about that because that's going to mess everybody up. So we want to check Sorry. because there is an epsilon that exists in the first of C D, and we cannot check for X epsilon. What we can check for though is the follow of B. And that's because it's epsilon. Okay. Yes. No, so or, or B. T type is equal to E. What about the follow of B? Oh, Z. oh okay. I'm looking at the first B. Right? So if it is, then I know I'm in this rule B goes to C D. So what do I do? So now I need to call parse C. But what do I have to do first and why? We should unget token. Unget token Y. Just because you, you did a follow. That's the only reason. Because the follow no, because we just read a C D or an E. Does this rule produce a C D or an E? Uh, C. This rule right here. Uh, no. B goes to C D. Little. This rule itself does not produce a little C or a little D. No. Right. That's going to come from either C's or D's or after us even for an E. So the, you basically saying we always call unget token when we hit a non-terminal first or in general. We need to call it. We need to. We only want to consume a token when our rule produces that token. Okay. Like here we want to, cons as we'll see in the other clause, we actually want to consume that B token because that came from this rule. And then we're going to call parse D, and then we're going to want to consume that, that D. So all I consume a token when it comes from that rule. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That's every case. So we call unget token, and then we parse this rule. So we want to say parse C. And if that returns correctly, we will parse D. And we print out. A uh, B goes to C D. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. So else is gonna do the other if, check. Right. What so what do we need to check? Um, first of what? Uh, B D B. Yep. D yeah. D, D B. Boom. So what's that first set? B. So that's if. If t type equals b. And do I need to check the follow? Uh, no. Because there's no epsilon. You said only if it's exactly. epsilon. There's no epsilon. I'm learning and epsilon. by part one, we already proved that we know that there exists an epsilon in here. That means there must not exist an epsilon in here because it's a predictive grammar. So we know that epsilon cannot exist both on this side and this side. Now, is this a coincidence that when you check the first of CD, it was CD here, 
in that B, and in this case, it's only B. Yes, okay. because all of these, this first set of B, right, is the first set of this union with the first set of this. Okay, so it's not a coincidence. Nope. Okay, that's something that worked. Okay, so if it's a B, now I know I'm trying to parse this rule. So do I call unget token? No, because that now B came from that us. came from the rule. So just call it get token. So now I want to call parse D, right? Oh, call get I want token D to parse right. everything. Okay. And now when D returns, now I need to make make sure that the next token is a B. So you check again. Now I exactly. Right? And then here, so I have T type equals to get token. Now I want to think about, um, so now I want to check if T type equals B, right? Yeah, there's two ways you can do it. I mean, if T type, so we can do this. If T type equals B, then I print. And that's B goes to a little b, capital B, and then B. Else, so what if it's not those? It's, it's a syntax error. Right? Yep. I remember that. And we're not quite done, so we finish this if, this if else. So what if none of these are true? It's still a syntax error, right? It's going to be a syntax error, right? But it's none of them. Yep. All right, so what, when is the case where you actually print epsilon? What's the next one? Is the next one print G? Yeah. Can C? We, we have time to do that? Yeah. yeah. You can erase this, that's fine. Because this is right. recorded, right. so I can look at it later. Multiple gigabytes worth. Hope it's not fuzzy. Yeah, whatever. So figure it out, you just have young eyes. <laughs> yeah, this is good enough. Because uh, I'm talking through it, so if I can just listen to the recording again, I was here. Well, those poor people who aren't here. <laughs> or watching us online. I care about everybody, just so you know. <laughs> One the video like five, like a minute. Uh, throw in the video a minute. Exactly. Stuff. Okay, part C. So now we got to part C, so we always need to get the token. T time. Let's get a token. All right. Cool. I have two different rules. Right. So I'm going to check the first rule. So if. T time. What am I checking? Now we're checking the first of little C, big C. Say if t type equals c little c, and you parse c. Yeah. Do I want to call it unget token? No, because there's no epsilon. So, but do we parse c? Because it's the same. Okay, I guess you're right. So we parse. Yeah. Right. So it's a recursive. Okay. It's going to keep doing this. But look, every time we call parse c, we have consumed a token. Right. We've consumed a c from the input. So it's not. We're not going to infinitely loop. Because we're moving through the output. Okay, yes, that makes sense. Because next yes. won't be C. Then exactly. And then eventually, yes. okay. this next rule will kick in. Okay. So then what's the else of this? Else if what? Else if now it's checking for the first of epsilon. I mean, the first of the second rule. So there's. So I'm checking here. So I want to check the first of epsilon, which is epsilon. But we know I can't check epsilon. So what do I do if there's an epsilon yes, in this first epsilon, set? epsilon, you check a follow of. Yes. Of. It has to be C. So it's always a follow of the rule. Yes, left the left hand side. Okay. So that's so now we check if it's D or E. That's the follow of C. Or e. Okay. Now if it is Now if it is, we, what do we do with that token? Do we unget it or not? We unget because it's a follow. Yes. And because right. this didn't come from us, right? We generated nothing. Right, that came from. We but we right. got a D or an E that came from after us, right? So we right. know we need, we have we know we have to put it back. Okay. And then we. Oh, here I'd print. Oh, okay. All right. Print right. Uh, C, C goes to little C big C. Okay. So unget token, then I print. And this is what you say C goes epsilon. Yep. Because this is goes that hard. I don't know why I'm struggling. Well, is, everything's hard until it's easy. That's true. I'll take your understanding. And, now and then else? The else would be syntax error. Yep. And this is part of. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it, actually. That's this if else, right? And so, yeah, you can see the recursion here, right? right. Every time this goes, when we keep reading C's, we keep creating the rule C goes to big C, low, big C, big C, we keep parsing that. And then at one point, we'll read a D or an E, so we know that C chose the transition of C goes to epsilon. So we can stop parsing that, and our call stack goes all the way back. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah.
So they don't come in get tokens if we do if, is if we do a follow. On that. Wait, hold on. Let me stop this for a second. Okay.